the ranking member on the Roads and Transport Committee of Parliament, Kwame Adboja, wants Parliament to haul before it the General Secretary of the governing New Patriotic Party, John Buedu, and Senior Presidential Advisor, Yao Osafu Mafo. The Adaklu MP alleges that the two made comments that undermined the authority of the Speaker and in contempt of the House, and this in relation to Alban Badman's directive to the Roads Minister on the cessation of road tolls. Before we hear from uh, Kwame Adboja on this, let's listen to John John Boydou, who made the comment, uh, which has drawn the attention of the Adaklo MP. Because now, Sabi, 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 speak and okay, you know. I don't know, no, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, so that's John Boydo essentially saying that the roads minister needed to do that to avoid confusion at the road tolls and that if the speaker thought it's necessary to still go ahead with the collection of road tolls, he perhaps could do it himself. Now, we can hear from Mr. Adboja who uh, was enraged by the comment and wants the house to take action. The people, you can be so heartless. You sack the people yet you, have, you put it in your budget as an achievement. This morning, those disabled people, those young mothers, fathers who have been selling around the toll booth, show me where they are working this morning that you are using them as an achievement in your budget. Where are they working? How heartless can you be as a government? Mr. Speaker, to add to the tweet, the road minister is a senior member of this house, Mr. Speaker. I take strong exception to the fact that he beat a law in this country. He beat a law by arrogating to himself the right to determine whether we collect taxes or not. And when Mr. Speaker gave a directive that the road minister, who is also a lawyer, should backtrack and do the right thing, the road minister refused. Rather, senior members of the new patriotic party have sought to denigrate this house. Mr. Speaker, not too long ago, Black Rasta said something about this house. He was held before here. So what is the difference between what Black Rasta did and what John Boedu did in Central Region by telling you, Mr. Speaker, that if you want to collect the tolls, you should go to the toll booth and collect the, 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 the tolls yourself? Why is John Boedu not being held before Parliament? The senior minister said that if Mr. Speaker, if Mr. Speaker, doesn't know that the road minister can refuse to collect the tax, then Mr. Speaker doesn't know what he's doing. Let me ask. Listen, let me ask you. What, let me tell, ask you. What is the difference between what we did to Professor Dobu and Senior Minister? Mr. Speaker, why is Mr. Senior Minister not being heard before this house for his mis mis misconduct against this? Well, he took his stand during the contribution of and the debate of the 2022 budget. The Adaklu MP observed that the failure by the House to haul the two before it would pave way for others to subject the legislature to ridicule. Mr. Speaker, if we don't take action against John Boedu and Senior Minister in the future, it will be difficult for any, any citizen to understand why Parliament will, be, will bring them here to be able to do something. Mr. Speaker, I challenge this House to make sure that John Boedu and Senior Minister are heard before the Privileges Committee of this House. Mr. Speaker, I have no reason to believe that this government has lost its track. This government is not on course and the, the, the illegal Baumia tax has nothing to do with development of this country. It's just to give more money to the government to keep wasting. And for this reason, I call on all people in this country to support parliament. For the speaker to insist that the right thing is done. And all those members of the new patriotic party who want to undermine the speaker by telling him to go, go, go and collect the toll booth should know that the days are coming where the powers that be the principalities that work to undermine the parliament shall fall and parliament will be able to stand and do whatever we, we are supposed to do. Well, this new push for contempt comes more than a week after the speaker himself threatened to cite the minister, Kwesi Mwakwata, for contempt. Here's a Newsdex report. 
Last week, the Speaker of Parliament, Arban Bagui, directed the Roads and Highways Minister to retract the statement on the cessation of road tolls. He sternly stated that the Minister had no power to do so. This was after the minority leader described the action as one usurping the powers of the Parliament. I am submitting strongly that this House must take a serious view of the conduct and directive of the Minister for Roads as is an attempt to usurp the powers and mandate of this August House. And Mr. Speaker, to suggest as if this country is not governed by law, it cannot. Whilst he has every right to be in a hurry, to listen to the present directives to be in a hurry, he cannot be in a hurry to usurp the mandate of this House and be in a hurry to revise a legislation that this August House have not so approved. So it's for us to draw his attention and tell him that you have no such authority. In spite of all the uh, legal and uh, uh, linguistic gestures that have been displayed, it is very clear that what the minister sought to do, he has no such authority to do that. It's not a matter of operationalization of the law. And so I want to clearly direct that what the minister has released is complete brutal fulming. It means it's an empty boost. It has no effect. So I think that is proper for us to direct the minister, a member of this house, in fact, a senior member of this house, is not just a junior member, it's a senior member of this house, who is used to all this. And I think that he might have reacted wrongly. And therefore, I call on him to honorably withdraw that directive. The majority leader, however, disagreed with the speaker questioning his authority to direct a minister of state in that manner. The minister wanted to save the situation as to whether it conformed to legality. That was another matter. That is another matter. But the minister acted timelessly to save life and property. Mr. Speaker, that is why that is why the directive was not about the suspension of the law. The minister could not have suspended the law. He only dealt with the operationalization of the law in place. Shortly after that, the Bwako South MP, Samuel Atachia, said the Speaker had no power to cite the Minister for contempt of the House. I am of the humble view that this is not a resolution of Parliament. Parliament did not resolve that the Minister should retract his statement. No, but the no. Speaker was clear. The, the speaker, speaker says so. Yes. But the Speaker is not Parliament. You see, a resolution of parliament is a decision taken by the house. But the speaker is the head of parliament, he's, isn't he? He's a referee, but he doesn't give directives to uh, a parliament as to ethics. He will be sitting in his office or say that this is my will. The will of parliament should evolve from the members of parliament via a resolution. Mm. To that extent, I'm of the view that there's no resolution of parliament that has been handed down, the disobedience of which will amount to contempt of parliament. What is worse, mind you, this is where the laws of this nation, uh, uh, I mean, is made. Right. And to condemn a man without hearing him uh, flouts the natural justice principle. It's called the Audi or term pattern principle. So therefore, if you look at it from the perspective that the minister was never heard, then a judgment against him without hearing will not stand in law. And that is very, very uh, unfortunate. The minority described the utterances of the majority as an attempt to undermine the authority of the speaker. It's exactly a week since the speaker ordered the roads minister to retract the cessation of road tolls. Clearly, the speaker's directive has been ignored. Will there be a bite 
after the back. Let's speak to Kwame Adboja. His MP father, Chloe, joins us on the line. Thank you very much, sir, for your time here on Joy News Prime. And so a number of directives coming from the speaker being ignored, including the threat of contempt. What do you say to those who say the minority is simply interested in blowing hot air? Well, good evening to you, my brother. Good evening to your cher uh, cherished listeners. Um, well, it should uh, be known to every Ghanaian that if we effectively undermine the speaker and authority of parliament, then we do not have a democracy. Because the only thing that makes a difference between a democracy and a, des a despotic state is uh, parliament. There's a reason uh, the Constitution of Ghana provides for us to have a parliament. That is a check on the excesses of the, of the executive. Exactly the kind of things that the road minister has been doing. Whether it's the award, a unilateral award of a $570 million contract to uh, an, uh, an illegitimate uh, foreign company without recourse to parliament, whether it's uh, the, uh, his uh, I mean, order to stop the collection of toll, which will lead to the loss of 10 million Ghana City to the state just because he, he, he decided to uh, arrogate to himself power he doesn't have. But let's go to the, the primary uh, uh, issue. Mm. Uh, I heard on, uh, Honorable, my very good friend, Honorable Atachia, say uh, Speaker is wrong. Nobody placed a motion on the floor with, regarding this issue. The minority leader came under, uh, I think, under uh, 70, uh, uh, a standing order, basically, asking that there was an issue of urgent uh, uh, nature that must be heard by Speaker. And this is not the first time. In fact, even that last week, there was an issue of uh, a breach, a breach uh, in Adentan constituency which my colleague uh, Ramadan, mm. Honorable Ramadan, needed agency. He couldn't get it. Out of that, a child fell into uh, uh, um, uh, the, 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 the ditch and died. Well, after the, he brought this up to the attention of uh, 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 Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker directed that the road ministry should take urgent steps to remedy the situation. It didn't come by a resolution from Parliament. So those who are saying that uh, it because, just because it's not a resolution from Parliament voted on by members, FICA cannot give directives. Can, they should go back and see the record and proceedings in Parliament. We have done this a million times. But what is more important is that the whole of Parliament, including the majority, accept that the road minister has uh, 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 offended. All they are saying is that they don't know whether uh, the, it is important enough for or whether speaker's directive should be taken. So Mr. Speaker's directive must be taken. If Mr. Speaker mm. or members of parliament find something wrong, it, there's no, no ambiguity in the fact that what the road minister did was wrong. If you read what the finance minister said, he said clearly that when parliament approves the budget, they, they told the rate for the toll yeah. uh, 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 on uh, our uh, road will be accelerated. And Mr. Abuja, that is not that is not in doubt at all. In fact, we've heard from uh, some of the leadership of the majority agree with you on this, except that they do not agree on the path the speaker chose uh, to try and re redress the issue. The crux of today's conversation is why the minority concerned about uh, attempts, you say, by the other side to undermine the authority of the speaker, not urging him to take action, crack the whip on some of these issues uh, that he finds uh, of contempt to, to the House? Well, in the Parliament, we work as a team. We work in collaboration. I am of the view that the new patriotic party is very uncomfortable with Honorable Speaker, uh, Honorable Bagley. So they have decided to mount an all-round attack on him, right from the party and every, everywhere. And it's upon the NDC and the rest of the, the country to decide to protect the sanctity of parliament and to make sure that nobody is asking Speaker to, to, to act outside of the law. And he didn't do that. So we, we see this as an attempt to uh, undermine uh, uh, parliament, and we we'll have to advise ourselves accordingly as well. As for this issue, it's quite clear. Mm -hmm. To the extent, my brother, look at this. They tell you that all this uh, hula baloo about uh, the, the road minister took a decision uh, to, to avert uh, a, a possible loss of life and property. You and I know it's a, a palpable lie. Mm -hmm. 
There was no incident anywhere in this country mm. after uh, the announcement. Mr. Anuja, because we're running out of time on this, uh, just yes. a quick one. Will yes. you push through with this issue of contempt hauling before the House, the NPP's General Secretary and Senior uh, ad uh, Advisor to the President, uh, Yao Safu Mafu? Will you push this through? Yes, I believe whatever they've done is equal to what uh, uh, Black Rasta and then Professor Dodo uh, did, and they must come before the House. In my personal view, we are giving them the opportunity to either retract and apologize to Parliament, failure to which speaker have already directed that they'll be, they'll be cited. Well, let's see what Very happens well. uh, going forward. Very well. I'm grateful for your time. That's the MP for Adaklu, uh, Kwame Governs, Abuja.